If you were to ask, well, just about anybody, what the best low-level aircraft were in War Thunder, just about everyone would say the Russians. And they'd be right. The Russian reserves and low-level biplanes are fast, incredibly manoeuvrable, and if they don't have twice the number of machine guns as everybody else, then the machine guns that they do have fire twice as fast as everybody else. In fact, if you were to ask anybody what the worst nations are to start off with in War Thunder, most people would probably have to toss a coin between the British and the Japanese. Alright. Challenge accepted. This is the F-1M2. Technically, it's not a Japanese reserve aircraft but it is the same effective rank as the Japanese reserve aircraft. This is a rank zero biplane. And it's a heap of shit. <laughs> um, the only good thing about it is that it is quite maneuverable. But all of the low-level biplanes are quite maneuverable. The armament is weak. It only has two 7.7mm machine guns. It doesn't fire very quickly. And it's very, very prone to overheating and jamming. It's fragile, it's slow, it's a heap of shit. Not only that, the matchmaking, well, it's not as bad as it could have been, but bearing in mind that my lineup in this match consists of nothing higher than rank 1 aircraft, and there are rank 3s and 4s flying around here, and some of those rank 3s and 4s are on with 20mm cannons. So, I've got a bit of a challenge ahead of me. And there's my first target. And to be completely fair, this guy didn't make it hard. He's in an MC200. And he's just... He's just letting me shoot him. <laughs> Is he even aware of where I am? I mean... I'm certainly not complaining. You know, this guy could not have made it easier for me to kill him. So, you know never want to look a gift horse in the mouth. I killed him. However, despite the fact that I am flying one of the biggest pieces of shit in the game, and despite the fact that he made it as easy as he possibly could for me to kill him, it did actually use up almost all of my ammunition to do it. So I go for a quick reload before looking around, making sure I'm clear, and then trying to figure out who to go for next. Now this is a ground strike map and well as long as I'm being left alone I may as well kill some ground targets. Now I do only have 7.7 millimeter machine guns but that's certainly good enough to deal with anti-aircraft trucks and you can do damage to armored cars with these things as well. So let's start working these guys over. Whoa I-15 very dangerous little aircraft so I put some shots into him. Fly by. Tail gunner works him over. There's my second kill. <laughs> um, which leaves me free to continue strafing these ground targets. Now the ground targets that you have on this map consist of light pillboxes, which I can't do any damage to. Anti-aircraft trucks, which I can kill very easily anti-aircraft emplacements, which I can kill very easily, and armoured cars, which I can kill, but they take more ammo, they can take more of a beating. The armoured cars aren't actually that much of a threat to me. The anti-aircraft guns are a very significant threat to a very fragile and slow little biplane like this thing. So I'm prioritising the anti-aircraft emplacements. And they all count towards the kill counter at the bottom of the screen. You can see we're leaving. We've got far fewer ground targets left to kill than the enemy team have. And the enemy team appear to be completely oblivious to the fact that I'm just cruising up and down this valley, racking up the ground kills in my really, really shitty little Japanese rank zero float plane. So as long as I'm being ignored, I figured I'd just, you know, carry on winning the game. Hmm, light pillbox, bunch of armoured cars. I'll save them for last. 
we'll take out the anti-aircraft guns. It's easier to kill the armoured cars if you deal with the anti-aircraft guns first, because you can see how the anti-aircraft fire, even if it doesn't hit you and damage you, it throws your aim off. It's always wisest, if you can, you know, it depends on the situation, but knocking out the anti-aircraft guns, especially in something as fragile as this tiny thing, is always the best way to go. And I think I've just killed all of them. Yep, that's a pillbox. There's nothing left up there. Time to go hunting armoured cars. Now, killing armoured cars is certainly doable with 7.7mm machine guns. It's a little bit more doable with Russian 7.7mm machine guns because they have so much better a rate of fire. But as long as you're accurate, well, you don't really need the rate of fire. Unfortunately, it looks like I've finally attracted some enemy interest. So I'm probably only going to get one run before I'm going to have to turn around and deal with it. Yep, two of them. HE-51, two... there you go. Did I mention how fragile these things are? Tried to get out of the way, um, clipped him anyway, and funnily enough, the HE-51 didn't appear to take any damage from it. Oh well. Um, no, we'll stick with reserves. KI-10, Japanese reserve aircraft. They're pretty terrible. <laughs> Uh, much like the F1M2, they're slow, they're incredibly fragile, and they have terrible firepower. So once again, the odds are definitely stacked against us. Although, well, you know, they're no worse than the German early biplanes, they're no worse than the British early biplanes, they're just like the Americans and the British and the Germans, they're just nowhere near as good as the Russian early biplanes. So, you know, at least I'm, I'm not any more shit than most of the rest of my team when I'm flying one of these things. The trick when you're going up against the Russian biplanes is whatever advantages you have, never ever give them up. And I'll show you what I mean here. It's another I-15. He outclasses my Ki-10 in almost every respect. Right now, the only advantage I have over him is a positional one. So I need to maintain my height advantage because that gives me at least some of an energy advantage. If he starts turning, I'm not going to try to follow him into a turn. I am going to go vertical. Keep the height and energy advantage, because it's the only way to maintain your speed in one of these little bastards. If he does go vertical, I could be in trouble. Look at how quickly this thing loses speed. But again, I've managed to maintain the position advantage. Except now I could be in trouble. But he doesn't try to turn on me. Instead, he's focusing on the ground target. You can see how much of a beating these little bastards can take when you're shooting at them with two slow-firing 7.7mm machine guns. And again, oh, well, <laughs> he went down anyway, but I wasn't going to try to follow him low into the turn. Stay high. Here we go again. It's not a Russian biplane, but it is one of those Rank 1 premiums. And because it's a Rank 1 premium aircraft, it comes with every single upgrade already unlocked. Don't try to stay low and follow them in the turn. Go high. It's the only way to keep the energy advantage, keep the speed there in reserve for when you need it. You can turn your height into speed by diving on them. Stay on them. Flip over, ready to drop down on him again. Didn't need to anyway. He's dead. Now at this point, a quick look at the scoreboard tells me that in order to win, we only need to kill three more ground targets. And, oh look, right in front of me, three more ground targets. 
time to go to work. There's one. Somebody else has killed another one somewhere else on the map. One left. Enemy planes coming in from both sides. Very honourable. <laughs> well, I was flying Japanese. Had to be done. So, yeah, the Japanese low-level aircraft are pretty bad. But they're no worse than the British or the Americans. And getting a good result in a bad aircraft is just so much more satisfying. There we go, finished second. And as you can see, by all of the unlocks, the aircraft that I used were about as far from fully upgraded as they could possibly get. So you can still do well. What surprises me, though, is um, I only finished second. And sometimes I just don't understand War Thunder scoring system. Same amount of air kills, more ground kills, and I lost less aircraft than the guy who came first. <laughs> Whatever. Still a good result. And hopefully entertaining to watch. Catch you next time, folks.